of that leads me to uh, the, the big P word, plagiarism. Uh, I didn't want this to be a, a seminar on how to not plagiarize because that's all negative. And uh, at the end of the day, what we really want is people who do good research and who present it effectively in, in good argumentation. Plagiarism is simply what happens when it's done badly. Now, you can do bad research and not plagiarize, but you can't plagiarize and do good research, really, because it, it's just, they don't come together, they don't work together well. So uh, we do need to talk a little bit about the whole plagiarism question. This is a big deal. Uh, pl plagiarism is widely viewed, especially in the Western world, as one of the great negatives, one of the things that'll get you in the most trouble in school. Um, and so you just don't want to do it. It's a big deal at Cary and uh, at UBC. And if you look at our student handbook, there's a whole policy around plagiarism, which defines it and gives uh, the details about what happens when it appears and so on. And it's just part of doing good research to avoid plagiarism. Yes, it's a Western issue, but then again, uh, carries a Western school. We have Western accreditation. The standards that we have to live with as faculty and as an institution are Western. So these are things we have to, to deal with. Uh, more important though, plagiarism loses the benefits that come from doing good research. If good research is about learning for yourself and, and owning and discovering for yourself, plagiarism bypasses that by just copying what somebody else thought and what somebody else figured out. Uh, Good research designs, is designed to give good skills and to develop certain abilities, and plagiarism just doesn't develop those at all. You get really good at finding sources and copying them, but you don't develop the skills of analysis and argument construction and presentation and so on. Uh, also, I mean, plagiarism doesn't help the community's learning to expand. It just passes around the same piece of information from person to person. Nobody learns anything new. Uh, and quite frankly, and, and this is one that I think needs to be raised as well, sometimes I, I've heard people from non-Western cultures say, well, you know, uh, I hear them say two things. I hear them on the one side say, that this whole concern about plagiarism isn't part of my culture, so yeah, I don't really feel it. Sometimes those same people will come to me and say, boy, I, we long for the day when uh, people from the church in my country are able to have our own voice and develop our own theology and really uh, take our own place in the global conversation around uh, the gospel and, and theology rather than just repeating what the Westerners taught us. Ironically, when you plagiarize, what ends up happening is you just end up repeating what the Westerners or somebody else teaches. And th the whole principle around not plagiarizing and doing good research of your own is that it's designed to help everybody, including people from non-Western cultures, to find their own voice. So uh, the fact that it's a, a Western concern, this is actually a Western concern that's very valuable for people who are non-Western and helping them to discover their own particular indigenous voice and way of thinking and teaching and proclaiming the gospel message. It matters for all of those reasons. So, so yes, plagiarism is a Western thing, but it's a big deal. Uh, you may say, well, you know, is this really something that comes up in seminary? And yes, it does. Every year, I don't teach a lot of classes, but I teach usually a couple classes a year. And every year, for a long time, I've always got somebody who plagiarizes in my class. Almost never because they're trying to cheat. Almost never because they're trying to get out of work or do something uh, that, that they shouldn't do. Most often it's because either they don't understand there's a cultural gap and they still haven't quite figured out how important it is to avoid this, or sometimes because they get under pressure and they're just rushed and they're desperate and they do something they shouldn't have done instead of coming and talking to me. And, and again, this is a cultural thing. Some people uh, will find that uh, it's awkward to come and talk to a prof and say, hey, I'm struggling with this deadline or I'm struggling with this assignment. Can I say universal rule? It is always, always, always better to talk to your prof, wrestle things through and get some help than to plagiarize, always. So uh, people do it for various reasons. We try to be sympathetic and helpful, but we have a policy and we apply the policy because we think it matters. So it really does matter to talk a little bit about plagiarism and uh, in the context of research. So maybe some context <clears throat> to understand, especially for those whose culture is not so concerned about this stuff, to understand why plagiarism is a problem, you have to think about why do I document my resources? I mean, why do I research in the first place? Well, I've talked about that. But why do I document my resources? A, a couple reasons. The first reason I document my sources is accountability. Uh, I can do all kinds of good research, 
and present my conclusions. But when I, when I present to you not only my conclusions but my sources, it actually gives you as my reader the opportunity to double check me. Has Ken really read those right? Has he used those sources right? Is he, is he really doing good research himself? You know, and you know, I hope you can trust that I do. But documentation allows us to double check each other and make sure that we're not misinterpreting and misunderstanding. So there's accountability. Uh, it's helpful to other researchers. So when you go to do research and you find a good source, that source hopefully will have a good bibliography and some good notes that will lead you to other sources that will be useful to you. And the same is true. Always, always when you're writing research projects, think about them as something somebody else might read. Not just your prof. I mean, of course your prof's going to read it and grade it. But always write research projects as though you're writing them for somebody else as an audience. Your church, somebody in, in your ministry circle, somebody in your family, some friend who needs to think through this issue. And if you, if you think of your projects as something useful to someone else, they will be better and more interesting to you. But if that's the case, then it helps them to know what sources you've used because someday they might want to read some more. So there's accountability, there's help to other researchers, there's a question of transparency, just showing where I get my ideas from and how, and there's a question of persuasiveness. It does add to your persuasiveness to let your reader know that you've done some research. It does. It's, sometimes it's necessary because it's a course requirement, but even when it's not, uh, people will just uh, have more respect for a conclusion you draw when you have a reason behind your conclusion other than, I feel like it, or I read one, one internet article. Uh, to, know that, to know that you're a person who does good research and, and you really uh, ground your ideas in, in good data will make people pay better attention to you. And this is true in paper writing, but it's true in sermons, it's true in Bible studies, it's true just in casual conversation in the elevator. So it's a good habit to develop. Uh, that's why we document sources. Why do we quote sources? Uh, quoting is not the same as documenting. And uh, so it, it's, it's good to keep these things in mind. Uh, I document sources that influence my thinking and that are helpful to me. But I quote for some other more specific reasons. Uh, when I quote somebody, it's a way of showing familiarity. It's easy to say, oh, C.S. Lewis is a great author. There's always great things C.S. Lewis said. But if I can actually quote to you from a number of different C.S. Lewis sources, it makes it really clear that I know them well. So it shows familiarity. It helps to connect your reader directly to the sources. I can tell you about C.S. Lewis and what a great author he is, but if I give you a good paragraph from one of his books, you go, oh, I get it. You get a chance to, to see firsthand uh, to hear firsthand the voice of the person that's influenced me. And so quoting gives your reader a chance to look past what you're saying back to your sources. Now, again, plagiarism uh, is what happens when you step out of the way altogether and you simply give the source to your, 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 uh, your reader. But it's no longer your paper. It's no longer your project. Now you're just functioning as, uh, as, a, as a messenger delivering something somebody else did. But while you're doing your own project and your own research and answering your own question, there are places where it's useful when you're drawing on sources that are valuable to be able to say to your reader, hey, listen to my source. Listen to my source in their own words and hear what they have to say. And it, it connects them effectively. In the process, uh, good quoting can add a sense of vividness and interest and diversity. It just mixes the paper up and makes it interesting. Uh, this would be a better lecture today if I... I, I don't know, broke and had some hand puppets or some video show or something like that interspersed with my droning on. But uh, variety is useful. And variety in a paper can be useful. And, and so quoting does that. Sometimes, sometimes, quoting lends weight to your argument. Not always. The fact that you quote somebody doesn't necessarily mean they're right. The fact that you quote somebody else's argument doesn't mean the argument's good. But there are places, especially if I'm quoting somebody I'm describing, where quoting them helps to, to just remove all doubt about the possibility that I might be misrepresenting them. And so quoting can lend weight to your argument. Just understand that it doesn't always. Uh, those are reasons why we quote. There are some good reasons not to quote. Or let me say it differently. There are some things that are not good reasons to quote. And sometimes people will quote thinking that they're doing something good when they're not. So quoting is not a good substitute for engaging the material yourself. Uh, as a prof who grades papers, I am far more interested in how you engage the material than whether or not you can find somebody else who engages the material well. I don't need to know what some other person who wrote something somewhere else in the country thought about this. I want to know that you're thinking about it well. 
So quoting is never a substitute for engaging the material yourself. Uh, quoting is never a substitute for building your own good argument. You can quote all the way through the paper and you can quote excellent sources that have lots of authority, but at the end of the day, I want to hear you make the argument that answers your question. So quotation is not a substitute for building a good argument. Uh, quotation is not a good substitute for building your own skill in language and communication. We hear this one sometimes where somebody comes from a different language context and they'll say, I struggle with my English. It takes me a long time to say things and I say them awkwardly and I work up my grammar, but it's not perfect. But that person, if I quote them, they just say it so well. That's true. But if all you ever do is quote them, you will never get any better. And so one of the goals of, of a good education is to develop your own skills and competence. And you get better by practicing. So while there's a place for quoting, there's also a need to put things in your own words because as you do, you will get better and better at putting things in your own words in English and in whatever other language you're writing papers in. So it's not a substitute for developing those kinds of skills. And that's why plagiarism is a problem. Plagiarism is a problem sometimes because it's a cloak, a cloak for bad research. People just didn't do the research well and they try to cover it up by plagiarizing. That's obviously a problem. But, but plagiarism reduces persuasiveness. If I get even the slightest smack that plagiarism is going on in your paper, uh, what I immediately think is, oh, here's somebody who doesn't feel that they can make their own argument. And th that's not helpful. I, I want to know that you're developing the skill of making your own case for the right answer to your question. The other thing is, uh, plagiarism robs your reader of the ability to trace sources. When somebody gives me a plagiarized paper, I look at the paper, and, I, and this often happens when I've had to deal with plagiarized papers. Wow, that's a good quote. I wonder where it came from. And I have to go hunting for it. And sometimes it's really, really hard to find. Now, of course, the fact that I can find it often is, is how I know that the paper is plagiarized. But, but many readers won't go to that much trouble. And, and plagiarism loses the ability for the person who reads your paper to go past you to find other resources that you've used. It, it just takes that away. Most important of all, plagiarism misses the whole point of a good research assignment. If the purpose of the research assignment is for you to ask your own question, find your own information, build your own argument, draw your own conclusion, own it, and develop skills in the process, plagiarism just bypasses all of that stuff which makes the, the whole point of the paper missed. And so this is why people are so upset about plagiarism in the Western world, is we have a really clear idea what research projects should produce. And we don't want you to lose those benefits by taking this simple, simple way out and, and just copying what somebody else has done. What exactly is plagiarism? Well, if you need a definition, you'll find this in the Kerry Student Handbook, page 17. It reads this way. Plagiarism involves giving the impression that the words or ideas used in one's paper or other submitted materials are one's own when in fact they are taken from another source. Uh, giving the impression that uh, words or ideas used in your paper or some other thing you submit are yours when in fact they come from someplace else. Now notice there's two things going on here. Uh, plagiarism is, is a failure to acknowledge quotation. That's the biggest problem, that's the most obvious one, and the one that will get you in the most trouble. <coughs> so if you're quoting, you need to let us know. Notice that this, this applies not just to whole paragraphs or whole papers. You can plagiarize three or four words. Now, uh, this is a little bit like trying to, to copyright. You know, you can't copyright a two-word phrase, generally speaking, because it's it's used in so many different ways by so many people that it's just public domain. But sometimes there's a, a collection, a short phrase or a sentence or something that's so distinctive, so clearly belongs to somebody who first wrote it, that really, you know, to, to copy without acknowledging it is a problem. Uh, an example of this one, people in, in North America often think about Martin Luther King and his famous speech where he says, I have a dream. Now, there's lots of ways you could say, I have a dream in a paper and it's not a quotation. But if you're talking about Martin Luther King and you say, I have a dream, there ought to be quotation marks around it because everybody knows that was part of a very distinctive speech Martin Luther King made. So plagiarism can be small as well as large. It's more about the distinctiveness of the ideas than the size of the package. Uh, a second area of plagiarism that people sometimes aren't conscious of is failing to acknowledge significant sources of influence. So. Uh, 
sometimes a person will, will take, uh, they'll read a, a great, great book, and, and the book has five key ideas about some topic. And they just love those five key ideas. And they'll, they'll build the five key ideas into their own paper, and they'll change the words, but they, they, have, they have five key ideas in the same order, and they're the same basic ideas as in the book. Well, if those five key ideas came from the book, that needs to be acknowledged, even if you're not actually quoting the words, where there's distinctive concepts or structures or things in the source you're making use of, uh, it's, it's only fair to the person you got that from, and it's only fair to the people who are reading you that you acknowledge and help to connect them to each other. So distinctive influences, key ideas, structures, things like this that aren't quoted can also be plagiarism. This is not usually as big a deal. Uh, it won't get you in as much trouble because it's a slipperier thing and it's not as clearly defined, but it does matter. And so pay attention to that. And again, it's, it's all part of this larger concern about being a good researcher, which means being transparent about my sources so that my readers can, can not only know that I'm making a good case, but that they can look past me and get more information from the sources I used. How do I avoid plagiarism? Well, I'm going to just suggest a, a couple very straightforward points, and each of them could be unfolded further, but for our purposes, these will do. The first thing, and the most important one, is understand that the purpose of most research assignments is for you to gather information and draw your own conclusions on your own question. If you understand the purpose for research assignments, plagiarism is much less a danger because the whole point is for you to do your work and, and give me your conclusions in your words as you own the issue and your conclusion to the issue. So uh, understand the purpose of most research assignments and it'll take you 95% of the way to never having a problem with plagiarism. Uh, secondly, I said earlier in my suggestions about research design, know the difference between uh, sources and the sub substantive information in those sources. People who don't make that distinction have a tendency to assume that if I quote a source, that I have made an argument. Instead of realizing that the source is a container in which there is con content, there are ideas and there's facts and there's arguments and concepts that I can make use of to apply back toward my own argument. Uh, if, if you draw the distinction, if you understand the difference between the source and the content in the source, you're much less likely to get yourself in trouble around plagiarism because your, your job is to engage the content toward your own conclusion, uh, not simply to, to borrow sources. So that's one that can be helpful. Third, real practical, keep good notes while you research. You're reading books, you're reading articles, you're looking at sources, keep notes. Uh, so often what happens, people get into the problem of plagiarism because they, they wrote something down. What a great idea, what a great quote, and then they lost track of where it came from. But it's such a good quote, they want to include it in their paper, but they don't know where it came from, so they can't cite, cite it. So uh, keep good notes, you'll be much less likely to get into that problem. Uh, fourth and related, uh, list your significant sources in a good bibliography. Again, there's more that could be said about bibliographies, but a, a good bibliography just helps your reader always to know what was useful and influential. Uh, bibliographies are not necessarily the same as lists of things cited. Uh, so be clear about the function of a bibliography. A bibliography lists both the things you have quoted and things that are of significant influence in your project and also things that would be significant helps to the person who's reading your paper. And there's some principles behind that that we'll deal with in another context. But uh, good bibliographies help to protect you from plagiarism. Uh, fifth, and this is maybe the most basic one on quotation, any time you quote, mark it clearly. So in the text, wherever there are quotes, there should be quotation marks. Or if you have a long quote, it goes into block quote format, which doesn't need quotation marks, but set off in its own way as a separate paragraph that's indented. So uh, most often, especially in formal papers, you're using footnotes. But sometimes a prof will allow you to use uh, in-text documentation. There's several different styles for this. The style in this case is not the big issue. The big issue is I should be able to figure out when you're quoting, who you're quoting, where it comes from. And so make sure that that's always there and that also helps to protect from plagiarism. Uh, <clears throat> at the same time, make sure you use uh, notes or whatever other things you're, you're using for, for documentation form to document other forms of influence. So again, those five key points drawn from some source, even if you don't quote those, it's appropriate somewhere early or late in the process to say, uh, I, I uh, am grateful to such and such an author for these five key ideas which I found very helpful. And that's all you have to say, 
Uh, well, you, you might want to say something about what book they're in and, and what page or what pages. But uh, again, even though it's not quoted, where there's that kind of significant influence, the documentation just helps to, to be transparent to your reader about where the ideas came from and helps your reader to know where to go to learn more. So make sure that the documentation is there and then uh, plagiarism is never a problem. When we're talking about plagiarism, I should also mention uh, sem in seminary the Bible is a bit of a special case. So if you were working in a secular university and quoting the Bible, they just treat it like any other source and it has to be quoted the same way. Uh, if you're doing, a, say, a, a New Testament exegesis paper, the assumption is you're reading the New Testament and you're giving us lots of New Testament content. content. So you may want to talk to your prof about exactly what the expectations are. It's not always necessary to put quotation marks around the Bible. And usually when you give a, a Bible reference, you don't give it in footnotes, you give it in the text someplace. And so the, the rules are a little different around the Bible just because it's so key for us as Christians. But even there, it should always be clear when you're actually quoting, when you're paraphrasing. Uh, make sure your reader knows what you're doing and make sure you know what you're doing when you're quoting, when you're paraphrasing and so on. It just makes better arguments. Bottom line, bottom line, your primary goal in seminary is not to get through your seminary program without ever plagiarizing. <laughs> that's, that's just not the point. I mean, the point is to, to grow and learn and develop and mature, to, to improve in skills, to become better equipped to serve, and along the way to find things out, to gain information and ideas and uh, expertise that will help you. That's the goal. And in research, your goal is to become a good researcher who does good research, learns things through it, can make it relevant for other people. Uh, but if you do that, then that will help to avoid the problems of plagiarism. So uh, aim at being an excellent researcher. Let, let uh, your seminary experience, among the many things that it does, be an opportunity to grow as, as, uh, as a research scholar, as a person who finds good information, who knows and helps others to know how to sift good from bad information, who models that whole set of qualities around good research that are very Christian qualities and very important for Christian leaders. Let that be the main thing. As you do that, uh, rem remembering that that involves the wise use of sources and careful documentation as well as drawing your own conclusions and so on, you'll find that plagiarism won't be a problem. But if you do have questions or issues or concerns about plagiarism, be sure to consult the student handbook, talk to your prof, talk to, to me, talk to somebody else on the staff, get some help. We would much rather help you with this than uh, have a situation come up where accidentally or on purpose plagiarism emerges and we have to deal with it because it is a serious issue and we want to try to avoid it at all costs. Anyway, those are a few thoughts. Uh, God's best to you as you're researching. May your study in every area and especially in this whole research area be really fruitful for you here at Cary. And uh, hopefully I'll get a chance to do some of these things with you in one of my classes along the way.